So hiya folks, you're very welcome along to John's Garage this week. Um, gonna, I've re I'm on my own in the car today, I have nobody doing camera, um, so if the quality of the footage isn't as good as you've come to expect, my apologies, but I'm trying to rig it here so that we can continue filming. Anyway, this week I'm driving a 1987 BMW E28 and it's a 525e so it's 2.5 liter six cylinder and we have an automatic gearbox paired up to this engine now i have to say so i've driven a lot of bmws and they've all been very germanic in nature very clear cut absolutely brilliant cars seriously well built and in incredible condition, each and every one of them, which has been an absolute pleasure to drive. However, this week, it feels a bit different. So it's very tectonic, okay, it's very solidly built, but it has an old world charm to it. So this car would have been released about 1982, so kind of would have been designed coming out of the 70s into the early 80s. Things weren't quite as solid as you would have expected by that time, but this car, it's a mix of old world and new world and i really really like it i actually think among all the bmws i've driven it lends this particular one a certain charm now what do, what am i talking about here what am i trying to describe right the body con control is quite solid so i'm driving on a bit of a bumpy back road here now at the minute i can feel the bumps but it's nicely cushioned but the thing is when i go into a turn up here this car rolls okay but it is very, very strong. It feels very, very solid. It's got plenty of power coming out of it. The auto box, it's a beautiful parent tool, lovely and relaxed, but it probably does sap a little bit of the power and acceleration, which would normally be available from a car like this. Fuel economy wise, on a long run, these actually, these straight sixes are actually quite good. Okay, you could expect probably early to mid thirties, which isn't bad considering the engine size and the period in which we're where the, the engine was designed in, the car was designed in. Nowadays, you might look at that a little bit and say that's very heavy, but all things considered, it's pretty good. Now, around town, however, it's going to be a slightly different story. It is going to drink the juice, especially with the auto box pairing, but it is a beautiful cruiser. The quality of the seat material, in my eyes, this has held up really good. Lovely kind of suede finish to the seats, very, very nice. I'm going to go out on the limb here. It's actually quite a cold winter's day, but I'm going to go out on the limb and say, even if it was a hot summer's day, I think I'd actually prefer these over leather. They're quite comfortable, well cushioned, nice and supportive. And let's face it, this car is what, over 34 years old, 33, 34 years old. These have held up very, very well, um, which is great, you know. Switch gear, typical BMW fashion, all logically laid out nice and clear lovely big dials for the heater controls and sliders depending on where you want to send that heat radio not original which is a bit of a pity but the owner does use this car every single day they've had a bluetooth radio fitted which i suppose a little bit of a modern convenience we do need it nowadays especially when this is a business person that owns this they need to be available on the phone no airbag but that means we have a beautifully crafted steering wheel scratchy plastic okay well it's not that scratchy actually maybe i'm being a bit rough on it but good actually i am being a bit rough on it it's good soft plastic beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel very nice switch gear nice toggle switches for the lights and so on and so forth which is great i like those kind of things again we have the traditional econometer the bmw finger has been wagged at me whenever i try and have a little bit of fun but I just love these old school dials. They're nice and clear. You just take a quick glance and you get all the information you want out of it. Steering wheel can be adjusted for height, which is very nice. Again, luxury feature of the time. Only criticism, and I've been really, 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 really nitpicking here in saying this, the door handles for the door release just feel a little bit cheap. Even for the period, they feel cheap. Like I had a 70s BL product. <coughs> excuse me and yes the plastic felt cheap but the door handle was a lovely chrome job and it just felt very very nice in terms of driving a car like this nowadays well it's beautiful it, you can see everything out of it there's no hidden spots there's no real blind spot to speak of not the likes you get in a modern car in which they have to load it full of technology then to warn you about stuff in your blind spot if you want to find out if something's in your blind spot here just look that's it that's all you got to do in terms of space in the car for me, 
Man, I'm nitpicking again. It's ever so slightly a little bit restricted up front, but actually in the rear I found, found it quite good. Now, one of the criticisms of this car when it was new is that the rear space was a little bit tight. And I, I suppose maybe it is a little bit tight, but people have to realize when comparing it to modern cars, modern cars have gotten a lot, lot bigger. Um, so I don't think that's a fair criticism, so to speak. No electrics in the sunroof. You have a lovely chrome toggle and you can wind up, up and down the sunroof, which is great. Again, nice big sun visors, no mirrors, no vanity mirrors, none of that rubbish. Your passenger gets a vanity mirror, but no light. And who really needs one? Okay, you don't really need that. Again, plastics, excellent and exceptional for the time. Probably a little bit dated now, but unfortunately, such is life. As we get older, we date a little bit, that happens. But no cracks in the dashboard, no rips or tears in the seat fabric. <coughs> And overall, a great car. Of course, for me, the best feature of this car is the front end. You got a beautiful sharp nose steering, or, or front end in the car, quad headlamps, lovely integrated uh, indicators. It just looks great. And you got a good solid horn as well for when you're coming through. I think the front end in this is something BMW. I've said it a couple of times now in videos, but I'd love if the designers or the marketing department, whoever is calling the shots there at the minute, but take a look at a car like this and instead of saying oh we could make that a hundred times bigger and stick it on the front of our car just say no it was perfect as it was designed it was perfect let's just grab something that just looks like that you know if you're all out of ideas bmw just look to the past everybody else has done it there's no real shame in it yes we would like futuristic designs no we don't want to get sick when we look at the front of the car you know and that's that's kind of the way i feel about bmw design right now that's unfortunate because the car is really full of charm i actually I, i'm really enjoying it now one problem with this car for me probably not for anybody else is that it sets off my ocd meter massively when i look at the rear of the car everything's perfect badge is in the right place with bmw roundel is in the right place lights nice and big and clear and then you look and you see where the exhaust is placed and at first glance you think, ah, they put it in the center. That's a bit different, but that's okay. Kind of like a mini Cooper. And then you look and you're like, actually, that's not in the center. That's about two inches to the right of the center. And then you're wondering what the hell did they do that for? So, you know, maybe nowadays we're wondering what the hell did BMW do this, that, and this for? And we were saying the same thing in the past. <coughs> Fortunately, it's at the back of the car, so I don't particularly have to worry about it. Okay, or see it very often, to be honest other things um switch gear i suppose inside i like the toggle switches i'm not going to lie I'm a, I'm a big fan of toggle switches i think they've they look great they've dated well um harks back maybe to the 60s 70s and so on and so forth actually i'd say in bmw's case maybe harks back a little bit further to their airplane history during the 1930s to 40s which i don't think bmw would like me to talk about that anyway suffice to say the german army at the time really found them very very popular um, I'm not sure other people found them popular, but they found them very, very good. And BMW obviously still likes to celebrate its history a little bit. But anyway, we'll leave that be. Um, it is a supercar. It is super well built. This particular one, 54,700 miles. I've just clicked over to 700 miles with it. And it drives great. In fact, I'm going to take a slightly longer path here at this junction so that I can enjoy it a little bit more. And there goes a new BMW and your driver is looking at me going, my God, your car looks great and my car looks something. Anyway, that's it. I'm really glad you came along this week. Um, again, I hate to say it, it's a car that makes me sad, but it's just sad that BMW can make cars with such charm and such feel-good factor and solidity and great depth of engineering. And then I look at what they make right now and I just think, oh, please, just give us a car that looks as good as it can be engineered and is and is engineered as good as it can be because i know you can do it just please do it anyway it's great to see cars like this to be honest for me and just one final word, thought it's great to see cars like this this is again a daily driver bmw this is driven every single day by its current owner okay it, again it is their family car and it's great to see people having older cars like that and saying you know what i'm just going to drive these cars these were well built they were built to last and i'm going to enjoy it Anyway, hope you enjoyed that trip. I'll do a little history video on this particular generation BMW and I'll release that next week. Other than that, thank you very much for riding along with me today. I hope you really enjoyed the channel.
拜拜。